July 13th, so a little over a week ago. It's the sixth report, so we're at target is 50%. Uh, the revenue summary will show that um, the differences in revenue from 2016 to 2017. Uh, the 2017 revenue continues to run slightly below the target at 49.06% and below the 2016 actuals for June. The month's total income was $736,212. Of that total, motor vehicles came in at $332,257, which is over the month's target by $33,315. The other major contributors to the month's total were payment in lieu of taxes at $120,000, interest on taxes at $8,059, building permits at $19,780, departmental income at $105,421, parking lots at $71,187, and the real estate trust at $50,880. On the uh, expense side of things, you'll see that we are under budget by $987,905, or 4%. In June of 16, the year-to-date expenses were $916,084, or 3.8% under the month's target of 50%. I know a lot of people see that and their eyes get big, but as you can see, there is a pattern. That's usually how we go into the summer months. And then by September or something, we're down in the 300000 or 500000 to the plus. So um, this is our busy time, as everyone is aware. I will just briefly go through and point out any of the departments or sections that are over the 50% target. Uh, finance is at 50.44 with the, the mainly driven by wages, repairs and maintenance, postage and public notices slash advertisements. The audit is at 72.71%. I spoke with the auditors actually a week ago and the draft audit was uh, almost complete. I also spoke with them again today and it was um, in the final re review process at uh, Plodzik so once they're done there then the draft will come to myself and I believe Fred gets a copy so we can do a review of it so it should be uh, printed very soon is our hope. Legal expenses, it, legal expenses is at 122.3%. The legal department as a whole is now over target at 68.7%. Outside counsel fees and litigation expense are the two driving factors here. General government buildings is at 50.2% when you include the open purchase orders. The police department um, and the fire department, neither one of them are over target, but I figured since they are large departments, it was still worthy of reporting. Uh, the police department is at 44.5% and the fire department is at 44.7%. Emergency man management is continues from March. It's still at 221%. That's the line item is $1,000. And so with that $2,000, uh, the chief is working with Homeland Security to get some revenue to um, offset those costs. Hydrants is at 49.06%. Uh, the second of the semi-annual payment should be coming shortly. In the Public Works Department, cleaning and maintenance is at 65.1%. The line item hired equipment is a driving factor there. Snow and ice removal is at 99.6%. Highways and streets as a whole is at 52.3%. Wastewater treatment administration is at 56.9% when you include the annual purchase order for op uh, for chemicals. When you don't when you do not include that they're at 507 the Public Works Department as a whole is under the but is under budget at 48.6%. Patriotic Purposes is at 61.53%. Town Beautification is at 73.35%. On page 17 and 18, the Warren articles that ha uh, were passed at town meeting, you can uh, start to see some quite a bit of expenditures occurring amongst those articles. Fund 24, uh, the Recreation Fund has a balance of $185,698, which includes beach sticker donations of $9,100 and $14,700 being awarded in scholarships so far this year. 
Fund 25, the Cable Committee, has a balance of $310,838. Fund 26, Private Detail, has a balance of $136,838. Fund 27, which is the EMS Fund, has a balance of $494,947. And the Wastewater System Development charge Charges, um, Fees collected in 2017 total $46,451 with a balance of $131,409 in that uh, account with the board approving uh, expenditures of $43,100 in March. I also um, just made myself a little note here that I have failed to report on the open purchase orders from prior years in the past. and. Um, they are down to only 4% being open. So 96% of all prior year purchase orders have been expended. So that is all I had. Excellent. Regina. Um, great job. Thank you. On the expense side, I have no questions, but I just have a couple questions on the revenue side. Okay. Now you go through and you adjusted quarterly what your adjusted budget amount is. Yes. So I noticed it was two that I know we didn't formally have a discussion in May because you weren't here, but there was two yes. that were a lot lower that you had to readjust for June. Mm -hmm. One was um, real estate trust income, yep. which I think Norm sort of explained why on that one. Yes. But the other one was parking lot revenues. Parking that was the, in May, that was parking lot revenues were 525000 and now they're dropping down to 500000 And Is that normally what happens for this month? Um, this is the first year that I've adjusted the budget after the auditors had uh, recommended that. Okay. I have to go back and look at my um, estimated revenues that I do in September for DRA because in September you have to estimate revenues before the tax rate is set. However, when the auditors were here this year, they said that um, they had recommended that we add this new column and that we adjust our revenues as we go along. And so I had asked if it was sufficient to adjust it on a quarterly basis. So. Yeah, and I mean, but it looks like you're pretty much right on. I mean, sometimes yes. we have more revenue, which is a good thing. Correct. But those I, are the only two spots where it's actually gone down from last year. Yeah, quarter. the recreation director is here, so she might be able to comment a little further. But I know that with the weather that they've had yeah. this year, I have noticed that there is a drop in uh, the revenue in the parking lots. Okay. And you can see that, I think, um, well, it's about 50000 in June of 17, it's about 50000 less than it was in June of 16. Okay. So that almost makes up for your 100 right there, you know, right. that it was adjusted by. So those numbers will <laughs> fluctuate, and um, I will readjust them for DRA, which is where it officially counts. Um, those are due September 1, but then when we go to set the tax rate, which is usually the end of October, but usually more in the beginning of November, they allow us to adjust them again. So up until the very last moment, you can't adjust. So by the, then we'll have a firm number on what parking lots oh, are I, out because the context will, will be over. So. I was just, I, that was just my curiosity. Yeah. I was just comparing, and that's what I came across. Thank yeah. you for mm -hmm. explaining. Rusty? I think everything looked good. I just uh, I wish Mr. Solbidek was still here because, as you mentioned, on the, uh, the Fund 25, the Cable Committee, there's... Three hundred, uh, $310,000 yes. in there. And uh, we have talked to, uh, one of the things the cable committee is doing is is trying to get a picture down the road of what they need to do. And they are working right now on prices of equipment that they need to do. We've also asked the school department to do the same thing. Give us a, a, a an outlook over three, four, five years. What you want, what are you gonna need for equipment? So until we get that back, we can't really talk on that part of it until we, we know what the expenditures are. So other than that, it was an excellent report. Thank, thank you. you. Mr. Bean. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Director, thank you for your report. Uh, and I wanted to get a, a little bit more uh, strategic uh, here this evening with you. And you had sent out an email to the board members, is that correct, on uh, uh, a bond amount? Yes, for the one for a one million dollar bond. Yeah, could you explain that uh, uh, for the public, and uh, could you explain that to the board, please? Yes, yeah, I was um, asked to calculate the cost um, at the current interest rate. What a one million dollar bond, the cost related to it in regards to interest, would look like. So I had sent out an email. First, I had attached what we had just received from the New Hampshire Municipal Bond Bank because they had just had their bond sale in July, and it broke down the different interest rates that they 
received four um, bonds, and they're five-year bonds. They received an interest rate of 1.76. The 10-year was 2.34%. The 15-year was also 2.34%. 20-year was 2.67%. 25 at 3.15 percent and 29 at 3.33 percent. What I had uh, generated for the board and emailed out was a one million dollar bond. Uh, interest cost on a 10 year um, term at the 2.34 percent is what I I used what the bond bank just sold at it was 128 thousand seven hundred dollars on a 15 year bond at 2.34 percent. The interest rate cost was 187,200, and on a 20-year, uh, one million dollar bond at 2.67 percent, the cost was 280,350. Uh, so that would be additional above and beyond the million, of course, because you have to pay back the million too. Wonderful, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. We we do have uh, uh, some state reps in here. We have a busy agenda, but I just wanted to uh, again. Uh, Look at that. There was a PowerPoint presentation. I, of course, serve as a, a legislator, uh, and we're talking about the state park. Uh, Mr. Cushing was uh, uh, just uh, uh, interviewed by New Hampshire Public Radio. Um, there's been some dissatisfaction with that. And when we look just strictly from the meter transfer down at the beach, which used to be our beach, just the meter transfer alone, forget the operational costs, forget meals and rooms, uh, and we look at our exigent needs in this town, if we look at a million dollars uh, on a 20-year note at 2.34, uh, that's uh, $90,000. So some people have said this is hogwash and we need to uh, um, cooperate more with the state. I would say the state needs to cooperate more with us. That's our beach. And if we went 16 times that, 16 times that million, okay, that would be uh, what we are transferring alone. In other words, what we transfer to the state just on the meters in this state would be $16 million, and those meters alone would pay for it. We have a police force. We have a parks and rec. So you can see that our infrastructure needs, you can see the money that the state's taking, uh, and anyone that opposes that really needs to have a sit down, and I'll be happy to sit down with anybody on that. Uh, we're taking that, that issue up to the state. Uh, there are some uh, uh, vacancies on a commission that oversees all of the state parks. And uh, New Hampshire uh, needs some Hampton representation on that. When you look at these kind of uh, opportunities that we are forsaking, and I want to thank you for that and the fine work that you've done there. And then when you go to the New Hampshire State Park website this evening, and, and Rick has just looked at it, you've got Mount Centipede, which is leased by a private corporation. When you go to the New Hampshire State Park uh, website, it's Mount Centipede in the middle of summer. And they've, of course, got their, their winter operations. But Hampton is not on the website okay. for the New Hampshire State Park System. And Rusty's laughing. Uh, and the insults go on and on and on. And those that say we should uh, cooperate more and that this, this solid financial assessment uh, is ludicrous um, really need to do some uh, financial training and look at what it's costing this town. This junior high school that's $24 million could substantially have been paid for just for meters. And uh, I say again that there's room for uh, improvement up there for a, uh, a fight for revenue in this town. Uh, we're doing some other things there. But when you actually talk, and I would encourage Max to do some financial reporting just on this issue that you have put on a loan director. And uh, we have got uh, two representatives in here tonight that are, uh, are working with other agencies on other exigent issues that um, are grappling with agency heads. And I won't speak for them, but uh, the the role of small government when we're producing this revenue that you have provided the, the, the numbers for are stark, and uh, we are impoverished uh, to the real standard of the revenue that we could bring forth to benefit ourselves, our standard of living, education opportunities for our children, and these type of numbers uh, dwarf what the $20 million that sits in our real estate trust fund brings in, which is about $700,000. So uh, the battle goes on, uh, knowledge is power, and uh, we need a more sophisticated look. And the data that you bring outside of your monthly financials in this type of cooperation is very, very important. Thank you, Director. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Rick? No, but thank you very much. I enjoyed your report. It's great, as always. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank uh, you. I can ask questions, too. Oh, you can? I can, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm ready. I'm getting up. <laughs> 
A um, couple of things. Uh, revenue for, for motor vehicles still coming in higher, right? Yes. Yeah, that, which is surprising because they say motor vehicle sales are down, but we're still doing better. There right? was a line there today, I noticed. Right, so we keep the our downstairs across. was crazy busy. Building permits still up? Yes, that one. It was down a little bit, I think, last month. Even though I wasn't here, I believe it was down a little, but it's back up. Okay. Now, departments that are over, like you said, legal expenses of 122.3%, yep. yep. you keep them a, a a prize to that, right? That yep, every over. um every department head gets uh, just their section of these financials. Okay, okay, and you keep an eye on them that, yep. that so they're not going to go too far over and it's not going to mess up the budget. Yes. And then you use initials all the time. DRA is what? The Department of Revenue Administration. Okay, I'm just because sometimes the public, you know, when we say initials, they're like, what, what are they talking yeah. about there? So thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for letting me ask questions. You're welcome. <laughs>